Hey everyone, welcome back! Okay, there are a million things going on with the ceramic dagger. This weapon is complicated enough that it is the singular reason it took so long for me to make this video. The last time I spent this much testing was Buggy Varuna, so if you're here for a one-stop shop of all things ceramic dagger, then I will deliver. Long things short, yes, it is a really good melee. It is also a really good stat stick. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. As always, these weapons are second generation Incarnons shipped with the Duviri Paradox update. The only way to get them is from Steel Path Circuit Mode. After clearing the quest and having Steel Path unlocked, you need to pick two of the weapons on rotation to work towards on Steel Path Circuit Mode. Clearing rounds gives points to point tiers, reaching the appropriate point tier and return to this screen to claim your loot. The Incarnon Genesis Adapters have a rotating 6 week schedule, with the full details in this video's description. If you do not get the adapter for your weapon before a weekly reset, it will not reappear for 6 weeks. If you get the adapter, you can use on your appropriate weapon at Cavalero and the Chrysalith whenever you want. Keep in mind, attaching the adapter requires Duviri open world materials, and has unlocked requirements on the Incarnon tree perks just like the original Incarnon weapons from the Angels update as well. Gimmick Time In the Incarnon mode, heavy attacking uses the normal swing with normal heavy scaling, but it also throws out two spectral daggers. These daggers inflict collision damage on hit and also cause a 5 meter AoE. The AoE has fall off. There is a visual indicator of the daggers exploding when they expire, but this is purely cosmetic and inflicts no damage or prongs whatsoever. Both the spectral dagger impact and AoE have the same base damage as the weapon. The throw is pure IPS, whereas the AoE is pure heat. The AoE force procs impact. Modding on elements will combine with this heat. Dagger heavy attacks hit twice, with each hit matching a normal hit and base damage before combo. This means hitting an enemy directly with the swings and daggers will inflict 6 times damage scaling before heavy modifiers and before combo, since there are 6 hits each matching a normal swing. The throw direct hit and AoE ignores melee base damage mods. This means prime pressure point, spoiled strike, arcane fury will not work. Killing Blow also does not buff the damage. The throw direct hit in AoE takes universal base damage mods though. This includes Vigorous Swap, Arcane Arachne, Chroma's Vex Armor, and Octavia Zamp. The throw direct hit scales with Condition Overload 2, but multiplicatively to universal base damage. The AoE ignores this. This makes the throw have ridiculous scaling on dedicated builds. That's about it. Let's get into the Incarnon Tree perks. Don't worry, I'll get into the stat sticks very soon. All 2nd generation Incarnons only have 4 perk trees instead of 5. Like all 2nd generation melee Incarnons, activating Incarna mode is done by reaching a certain combo threshold and heavy meleeing, be it via slam or swing. All give plus 100% melee damage as a mod, and extra parkour buffs. These parkour buffs are still inferior to Prados if you specifically only want movement utility. Rather, they are a near mandatory effect for those melees to be viable. Don't worry, they are actually strong. The second perk gives you more innate damage on the weapon. The bonus effect is even more innate damage, or initial combo. If you're using this for hack and slash light spam, you will take Breacher's Opportunity. As long as you aren't on a perma crowd control build, and are either hell tanking or shield gating, the shield break buck will always be active. Gun and Blade is used for any heavy attack build, be it dagger throw or traditional heavy swings. The 100 initial combo takes killing to ramp up and end thus only useful in endless missions like survival, disruption, defense, cascade flood, etc. It resets if you die. Because it requires kills in advance, this particular perk is not useful for pseudo exalts or exalts. For those abilities, you build for 12 times combo, or you just go 2 times and skip all the setup. Going halfway by prepping 100 initial combo with gun kills is not worth your time. While it says it requires primary kills, actually, kills with pistols also count currently. Archgun kills will not stack this for you. Keep this in mind, because Argonach Metal Augur strats will show up later, and that build uses a pistol to stack this. There is one caveat, the extra innate damage is ignored for condition overload, making CO give less bonus damage than you'd expect. This is significant, with CO ignoring over 50% of Ceramic Dagger's upgraded damage on light attack spam if you're using Breachers. The third tree offers instant gun reload on melee kill at 40% chance. You will only use this if you bring it as utility, there is no dedicated weapon build that uses this. Pseudo Exalt statistics will not use this, and actually DPSing with this weapon will not use it either. Plus 20 initial combo is solid for pseudo exalts when you don't want to build combo. This, with Corrupt Charge, gives you 4 times combo for pseudos that don't build melee combo on hit, such as Garant's Shatter Lash. 
the plus 20 combo is also the only perk relevant for heavy attack dagger throw builds. For normal heavy swing builds, you can choose between this perk and the plus 1 meter range. This perk is otherwise only mandatory for hack and slash light attack spam builds. The fourth tree, actually let's start from the left. This perk is shit. Until they change it, never, ever pick it. It only affects the first swing after swapping off your primary, you do not need to shoot your primary, and there is no timer to how quick you have to melee after you pull it out. Forcefully activating melee mode also works, but it only affects the first swing. This means it does nothing for light attack spam builds, and only buffs half of your heavy attack swing. Luckily, the first hit is what procs slash, and it only buffs one of your two thrown daggers, and does not buff their AoE. I do not know if it buffs the original crit damage or final crit damage, but it doesn't matter, because the other two perks are better. The middle perk grants an innate plus 30% status chance applying before mods. Any build revolving around status DPS today will take this instead of the right perk, which instead gives plus 30% innate crit chance before applying mods. The crit chance perk will be used for any build that tries to kill with raw corrosive damage or slash procs. These status and crit perks also apply to pseudo and exalts and apply once again before mods. Use this how you will, it lets you do stuff like slash core extremely consistently or red crit antlers. Atlas is the big winner this time, since his fists by default only have 5% crit chance. Adding an innate 30% effectively increases his crit scaling by 7 times, instead of running Avenger. Extra Gladiator mods on the Warframe and Gimping build somewhat to make sure you hit 100% crit chance. Atlas can now hit 304.5% crit chance for Forever Reds at 12 times combo with just Blood Rush, Sacrificial Steel, and Gladiator Might on your stat stick melee, with only a single set bonus active. Now you can take Brief Respite, Corrosive Projection, or Enemy Radar as your aura, and also free up Arcane slots from Arcane Avenger. It also means you no longer need to use Gladiator mods on Atlas himself to hit 100% either. Conversely, you can also make things like Heat and Hair or Gas Atlas a lot more easily without having to resort to Proton Snap and annoying 2 second wall latches, since the status perk also bumps you up to base 35% status before Weeping Wounds. It massively opens up options on the frame and is a complete game changer. Obviously it works on other frames too, but this is the build I've been running around with on Atlas. Build 0 for the stat stick Atlas setup, this is how I modded a red crit corrosive ceramic. Of course, modded for gas and heat status builds would differ from a red crit landslide build. Modding for pseudo exalts or exalts on other frames would also differ, but the main purpose of this showcase is to explain how modding with ceramic dagger does not change that much. Just make sure you have dexterity arcanes on your weapon and using Nermon focus school to maintain combo for your fists. Stances today are either stinging thorn or pointed wind. Ceramic dagger has zero slash and there is no way to add any onto the weapon. Stinging Thorn has by far the absolute most 4 slash procs of any dagger stance and is the one to go for slash DPS. But for raw damage builds, dagger throw builds, and actual heavy swing builds, the stance procs are useless and you will take Pointed Wind instead. Pointed Wind has the absolute highest damage percent of any dagger stance by a long shot and makes for quick work if you need to finish any enemy off. Let's go over more normal ceramic dagger builds. The first build is light attack slash spam. For this, you will want to take Breacher's Opportunity since melee spam builds face tank. Your shields will be breaking constantly for extra innate damage whether you are hell tanking or shield gating. Instant reloads are useless and so is initial combo perks as we will sit at 12 times forever, so we take the plus 1 meter range perk. Ceramic Dagger has absolutely zero slash on the weapon so we take the plus 30% crit chance perk. There is no way to make the weapon slash except from stance slash proc so we take stinging thorn for raw damage. Since the weapon cannot slash naturally, we can skip Weeping Wounds and run both Gladiator Might and Spring Loaded Blade. This lets us take advantage of the point on follow through stat for 7.8 meter poke range. Alternatively, remember CO ignores the innate damage buffs on the weapon perks. You can offer Sacrificial Steel over Spring Loaded Blade to buff the damage of the weapon further and partially to make up for that. Prem Smite still double dips bleeds for 2.4 times more damage, and this build is by far the simplest to use. And it's a traditional spam primer and melee afterwards. It is rather effective, but nowhere near as strong as Enidim Slash, due to condition overload ignoring the innate damage buff perks on the second tree. There are 7 more builds to show today, so it's time to move on. Ceramic Dagger has innate damage buffs that bring it up to 340 on face tank builds and has built in plus 100% base damage on Incarn on activation. Anadem could do a raw corrosive build with no primer, so 
Ceramic Dagger do it too? Yes, in fact, it can. This is because Ceramic Dagger is just an Inadem with higher crit chance and lower crit damage. A prettier number, red crit Inadem with less crit damage and it all balances out. It does still do a bit less than an actual Inadem though, since Inadem has plus 150% base damage from Sweeping Lunge instead of Ceramic's plus 100. But Ceramic can still kill base steel path enemies in roughly 2 hits on Grosive. Of course, we take Breachers again for extra innate damage, and because we don't use guns at all, nor do we ever lose combo from 12 times, we once again take plus 1 meter range. This build is all raw damage, so we also take the crit perk on the 4th tree again. The build is simple, identical to the slash build, except we use Prime Pressure Point instead of CO. We replace Gladiator Might and Spring Loaded with 2 elementals to make Corrosive. Use Prime Fever Strike, I literally can't fit it on, because if I format anything else, my other 7 builds will break. The build is brain dead. run to red dots on the map, and spam melee. I would strongly recommend using Arcane Fury on this build, since you do not have Condition Overload. The fourth build today explores a special dagger niche you probably have heard of. Amalgam Argonac Metal Logger is a mod that fits on Argonac, a primary weapon. It makes it so every single damage instance from dagger strips armor. This is important because Shattering Impact only strips armor on direct weapon hits, and ignores status effects. Amalgam Argonac Metal Logger also strips armor on status ticks. For AoE status procs such as Electric and Gas, this results in Quadratic Armor Strip Scaling, and when everything is armor stripped, they will die like paper from Quadratic Scaling damage. There are two variants of this build today, depending on whether or not you use Condition Overload and a Primer. Electric doesn't need it, whereas the gas build does. Electric dots scale with the elemental percent, but enemies stop contributing to the AoE chaining when they die. Gas dots do not scale with elemental percent, but enemies leave behind gas clouds that continue to do AoE damage and strip armor even after they die. For this setup, the goal is to strip armor off as fast as possible. The faster the armor is gone, the better, because the armor strip is more important than boosting your crits. Therefore, we take the status perk on the 4th tree for plus 30% innate status. This is still a light attack spam 12 times build, so the only relevant 3rd perk is plus 1 meter range. This also means that the face tank option perk, Breachers, is still the best option for more raw damage. This build only works with grouping tools, and I would strongly recommend ensnare. Longer lasting grouping, biggest grouping due to secondary pull effects after the initial pull, and also works on acolytes. The acolytes will get instantly stripped by the gas clouds and also ripped apart. Otherwise, Anthlites ignore Larva, Air Burst, Coil Horizon, etc. If you prefer heavy attacking them with 12 times combo for the Force Proc Slash, feel free to do so. Just keep in mind the build is not designed to do that and will have somewhat lackluster damage. For the Zero Primer Viral Electric build, it looks like this. Notice how the top 4 mods stay the same for every build so far. We completely ignore crits on the setup since status and armor strip will rip enemies apart. It takes too much mod slots to fix crit on the setup. Prime Pressure Point since we don't use a primer, Prime Smites are extremely important here to double dip Electric for 2.4 times more damage, Reach is important to hit through the crowd, more enemies hit equals more Electric procs chaining equals faster armor strip. This unranked mod is intentional. This build has 307.5% status at 12 times combo, meaning you're guaranteed to proc at least 3 status effects per swing. This is the lowest weight I can make Viral on the weapon relative to Electric, ensuring Electric is higher weight than Viral while staying above a 100% status increment. You cast and snare, you spam melee. That's it. Everything dies as they get stripped by Amalgam Argonac Metal Logger Electric procs chaining. For the primer DPS setup, this one scales to endurance, but requires more effort to play. Instead of viral, we mod gas 6060s. Our viral will come from a pistol instead. We also use condition overload this time alongside a pistol using secondary cucumber to massively buff the damage of our gas clouds, since gas dots do not scale with gas percent modded. This also means we have a free slot where shocking touch was previously. This slot has a lot of options, lasting sting for longer lasting gas clouds, healing return for face tank and builds to give you infinite health due to gas procs everywhere, or spring loaded versus a more attack speed mods to strip armor off and DPS faster against more enemies. Now let's get into the meat of the weapon, dagger throw gimmick builds. These builds are particularly disgusting for various reasons. Condition Overload is multiplicative to universal base damage sources, creating astronomically high damage scaling. The throws can headshot, which let them shred Demless and Acolytes. The dagger throws produce a 5 meter AoE on impact, giving them AoE clearing potential. This AoE damage is affected by universal base damage sources, even if it isn't affected by Condition Overload. 
Most importantly, the daggers have a perk that can permanently give them at least 6x combo, and the dagger throws take a full heavy combo multiplier scaling, meaning every throw will do at least 6x damage. Then there's the fact that dagger throw builds still actually swing the dagger itself, meaning that if you swing in the face of an acolyte, you might miss the headshot dagger, but both daggers, the AoE, the force proc slash from the heavy swing, and both hits of ceramic's actual swing will tag them. There are two builds I will showcase, a Rock Rosa build that can also be modded the exact same, except Viral, depending on desired DPS element, and a Gas build that focuses on quadratic scaling DPS in the option of AoE armor strip if you bring Argonath. All dagger throw builds will use Gun and Blade, because it allows you to throw massively buffed daggers once this is stacked, without having to build combo repeatedly. All dagger throw builds don't care about using the melee as an actual melee, therefore range is useless and instant reload of guns is useless. We take the plus 20 initial combo because this buffs up to 7x combo at all times. The fourth perk tree depends. On raw viral or Krosa builds, we go all in on crit with plus 30% innate crit and it guarantees reds. For the armor stripping gas build, we take plus 30% status. This ensures armor strips off faster, but actually I ran the math on the gas throw build just to make sure. Not only does status build strip faster, but status gas dagger throws have a roughly 39.5% more DPS than crit gas dagger throws. Let's see what's going on for the gas throw build. This is an infinitely scaling build I used with Ensnare that easily scales a nuke up to level 9k. It does so much damage that at a base steel path, enemies actually die even before their armor can be stripped off from the Malgum Argonac Metal Logger interaction. We have Condition Overload equipped, since it is multiplicative to dagger throw scaling. If you bring Arcane Arachne with this, you can easily see gas hits doing tens of thousands of damage per instance on base steel path. Except there are 10 to 20 gas clouds, and all of them are doing this damage. Weeping Moon scales us up to 330% status, meaning every dagger and explosion procs at least 3 status effects. Remember, we throw 2 daggers per attack. Our main weight is gas from the max rank 6060s, and Prime Smite double dips the gas clouds for 2.4 times more damage. Amalgam Organ Shatter cuts wind up down to 0.25 seconds, and we still run Sacrificial Steel with Gladiator Might. At 120 combo, we have 6 stacks of Gladiator at 1 out of 6 set bonus. Combined with Sacrificial Steel applying twice on heavy attacks and the throws, this pushes our dagger crit chance to 59%. This build is intended to be run with Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger. The self damage inflicted by constant gas kills will give a flat plus 45% crit chance triggering Avenger boosting our crit to 104% and ensuring we always benefit from the 3.7x crit multiplier. Also, yes, these daggers can benefit from Stealth Multiplier. You basically cast Ensnare, shoot your primer, hold F or melee to pull your daggers out, and heavy attack at them. Everything instantly dies. Double tap holster to pull your primer back out. The 100 initial combo perk needs to be stacked with a primary or a pistol. So bring your favorite toy to do this first. If you want to run the Amalgam Argonac version for infinite AoE armor strip and endurance, I would recommend bringing Nucor. It can both prime enemies for ceramic throws while also killing quickly to stack the 100 times kills in Karnon perk with heat damage Cascadia Flare scaling. The Corrosive, or if you mod Viral instead, is a lot simpler. It is still extremely strong, doing tens to well over 100,000 damage against base steel path enemies without buffs or priming. Grouping lets this shine the best, but that is for optimal KPM rather than a necessity for damage. Corrosive does not require grouping like Gas or Electric to DPS. It is strongly recommended to bring Arcane Arachne for this build, since it increases the DPS of the throws by 2.5 times. Since we are killing with raw damage and no primer, we do not need Weeping Wounds. Remember we are going all in on crits, which also means we took the plus 30% base crit chance perk. Condition Overload is replaced with Blood Rush because melee based damage mods do not affect the throws. Killing Blow also does not work. Weeping Wounds is replaced by Reflex Coil. The Corrosive Viral build has the freedom of extra mod space gas daggers didn't have. Throwing the daggers consumes all 120 combo and it takes a moment for combo to restack. Heavy Efficiency makes the combo recharge from 108 instead of 0, letting it hit 7 times again much sooner, letting you throw and benefit from full combo scaling again sooner. Focus Energy is thus also used to make Corrosive damage, pushing us to 90% heavy efficiency. While not needed for Ensnare Corrosive builds due to infrequent throws, this heavy efficiency is extremely useful for non-grouping DPS. On an Ensnare setup, you can run Shocking Touch and Dispatch Overdrive instead for faster movement speed. 
For Viral DPS, you just replace the Electric Mod with North Wind. Viral with Armor Strip will easily one-shot Demless, especially if you aim at their head. But what if you don't want to deal with a Dagger Throw gimmick? What if you just want a generic, boring, heavy melee swing build? It works extremely well for that too. You do still have a 6x combo, after all, from picking the Gun and Blade perk. This is what you pick for longer missions where it makes sense to stack 100 kills with a gun. Otherwise, pick Breachers for quicker missions. Instant Gun Reload perk is once again useless on all Ceramic DPS builds. You only use this if you bring melee as utility. 20 initial combo is less useful than plus 1 meter range if you picked a plus 100 initial combo perk. If you didn't pick Gun and Blade, then pick 20 meter initial combo for your fast missions. Heavy attacks of daggers force proc slash on the first hit. You don't need status chance since Ceramic Daggers cannot naturally proc slash. Even on a build that has Viral modded, you still get get enough status from Viral 6060s and Weeping Wounds alone at 6-7 to seven times combo. Since our main damage is coming from 4 slash procs, you will always pick plus 30% crit chance over plus 30% status chance on heavy attack builds where you want to DPS with the swing itself. Let's look at a zero primer heavy attack build first. I'm assuming 6 times combo, and we picked a plus 1 meter range perk instead of plus 20 initial combo. This makes Weeping Moods give 40% final status to Ceramic, buffing this to 84%. Daggers heavies hit twice, meaning you have a 97.5% chance to inflict at least one status effect on every enemy hit, and it is a good chance of being viral. The force proc slash on the first swing will finish them off. Sacrificial Steel applies twice here, boosting us to 216% crit chance for guaranteed oranges. Primed Breach to take advantage of 0.9 follow through, Amalgam Morgan Shatter cuts us to a 0.25 seconds windup, Prime Smite double dips for 2.4 times stronger bleeds, very easy to use. Group power or not, just spam heavy everywhere after you build up 100 initial combo from getting 100 gun kills. The Primer heavy attack build is barely different. We get to skip Viral 6060s and Weeping, since our DPS comes from Force Proc Slash. All statuses for Condition Overload will come from a Primer instead, such as Nucor or Epitaph. This frees up the three mod slots for Gladiator Might, Blood Rush and Primed Fury, or Reflex Coil. Reflex Coil lets combo restack from 60 instead of 0, letting it reach 100 much faster so we can swing again with full scaling. If you don't care about this, go for attack speed instead. Gladiator Might massively buffs our crit damage, and it combined with Blood Rush allows this build to reach 316% crit chance for guaranteed reds instead after Sacrificial Steal. Much higher crit damage stat and a full extra crit tier buff. Fun stuff. It plays almost the exact same as the previous build, you just shoot your primer though before you heavy. Those are all the builds and ways you can make Ceramic Dagger in Karnon. As you can see, it is a particularly ubiquitous and is pretty much amazing at everything it does, except at being a hack and slash light melee. But even for that, it is still decent. While the Ceramic Dagger is not busted or meta-defining by any means, it is an extremely good pick just for the fact it is all-purpose, and for certain pseudo-exalts, probably meta. Good at DPS, good at gimmick DPS, good as a stat stick, and also has utility in the form of instant weapon reloads if you're using a super slow reload weapon like Trumnar or Quellor. Anyways, stay tuned for the Lex and Karnon video. It's luckily a lot simpler. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've been doing with the Duvieri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. No one miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.